Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today I wanted to look at some classics of Chinese literature. What we have here is um, Xi Nayan and Wu uh, Guanchong, Outlaws of the Marsh, which is one of the earliest examples of what was, or what evolved to be, the martial arts novels, which are usually linked to historical events invariably linked to historical events. So this is one of the first which I've read, and this is the edition that I read. It's a later edition of this book, basically. It's The Outlaws of the Marsh, and it is, this later edition has a longer introduction explaining the history behind uh, the book. This one, third printing from 2001, and this is actually as indicated in the volume, is actually the first edition. Anyway, so I'll talk about some of the Chinese classics, the ones I've read and the ones I haven't read, and uh, a little bit about classic literature in general, just to talk about the uh, evolution, I guess, of the novel. But anyways, this is Outlaws of the Marsh, and it is in a slipcase. And I bought it, uh, obviously used, it's a dust jacketed uh, paperback, basically. And it gives you some indication of who the authors were, which are historically obscure because these authors would have hidden their names. Um, and you can only guess on who these people are. So Xin Nayan says, novelist of the late Yuan, uh, which would be about... Oh, be a time of Marco Polo, so about 1100 to 1200 uh, AD, and early Ming dynasties. So it's a basically a compilation of stories. Now, and they are linked, and there was an ultimate uh, redactor, a final editor that linked all these stories together. So this is the first edition from 1988. Copyright uh, by the Foreign Language Press from the same that year, 1988. And it only has a very short introduction compared compare to the book I showed you before, the edition I showed you before. So it starts with the, the beginning, which introduces a kind of supernatural event where the, the heavens, you could say, kind of presage or presage the coming of these uh, heroes, these outlaws. And you can see on the covers, as in this one, you see the one of the lead protagonists in a martial arts stance. Really and truly a uh, martial arts novel. And here's another one where the hero is doing the, the famous uh, greeting, martial greeting. All right, so that's volume four. All have different covers. Unfortunately, the later edition was not as, as slick as that and just basically presented some color covers, but with fairly uh, color versions. The later editions are not as well done as the earliest one. And I won't flip through the later edition, but this is the edition I read. And um, it was, this, uh, this edition is actually 100 uh, chapters long. So it really is a kind of, there's a historic, a, a chronology to the stories. But um, in the end, there, the, in the end, it kind of ends in a kind of, um, disappointing or tragic ending anyway so this is this this version of the story so all 100 chapters are are written in this in this edition and what it is is these heroes who um, uh, served the uh, they're called outlaws they served uh, the Emperor of China, the Sung Emperor of China, because it was written, or the events take place during the decline of the Sung Dynasty. And um, 
the uh, lead uh, heroes fight against both the corruption within the uh, Sung government, because the, the Sung uh, dynasty was basically corrupt and in decline, and how they served at the same time, served the Sung emperor in fighting against the Jin, who were basically invading the country at the time. All right, so that's this uh, edition. There's also a, before I show the other uh, edition that I have, I want to also show another classic. This one I haven't read. This is the Three Kingdoms. And this again tells you the story of the time when uh, the empire of China was divided into three different kingdoms and basically the um, fight to gain control uh, of the country. So it gives you the blurb on, on the back, it tells you who the translator is. And there again, in the first, uh, in volume one, the first volume, it describes uh, the the coming or the how Lu, Luo uh, Guanzhong basically compiled uh, the history of the three kingdoms. So it says, "The empire long divided must unite; long united must divide." Thus it has ever been. With this characterization of the inevitable cycle of Chinese history, the monumental tale three kingdoms begins. As important for Chinese culture as the Homeric epics have been for the West, this Ming Dynasty masterpiece continues to read, to be read and loved throughout China, as well as in Japan, Korea, and Vietnam. The novel offers a startling and unsparing view of how power is wielded, how diplomacy is conducted, and how wars are planned and fought. It has influenced the ways Chinese think about power, diplomacy, and war, even to this day. So just like the famous uh, Sun Tzu's Art of War, Three Kingdoms and, and even Outlaws of the Marsh actually describe how wars ought to be fought. So it's actually a seminal work, not just for um, the basics of Chinese history, the evolution of the martial arts novel, but also the... Um, how to strategize and how to fight in a war. So anyway, that's the Three Kingdoms. Another um, important classic that I have is this one. And this one is the story of the Monkey King, basically. It's the journey to the West. And basically it talks about this one, this uh, four volume set I've read from cover to cover. They kind of describe it at the back or in the blurb as a kind of uh, Lord of the Rings, but that's, I mean, written in this in the time of the Ming Dynasty, 1500 to 1582 by Wu Chang'un. And it tells you uh, the story of a monk, Xuanzang, who uh, travels to India, to the West, what was then the West from China anyway, to find a sutra or a Buddhist scripture. And so he travels with the, uh, the other uh, two, with the, with the monkey, with the uh, pig, and with the, uh, it says here, the monkey, the pig, and Friar Sand, as they travel to the West in search of a Buddhist sutra. So, Again, like the other edition, this is a later edition. I enjoyed reading these, and it has different covers. This is the cover of Volume 4, basically depicting uh, the four heroes. So Pig was the laziest of the bunch. And here you have the monk, Swanzong. And here you have Friar Sand. He's kind of a minor character, and he's the lead protagonist, the Monkey King. It features the, the stories are episodic. And uh, even though there is a final redactor, basically Wu Chang'an, um, the stories are, are episodic. And you can tell that they have like a, um, almost like, dis despite the martial arts fighting scenes, it has an almost like a, 
um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's it's like fairy tales almost. It's it's not a fair assessment, but it it has a each story, each chapter can be told on its own. Um, so anyway, that's that one. That's the journey to the west, which is uh, a quite enjoyable read. This is volume two. Okay, so that's that one. And one other one to show you, and that's the Pearl S. Buck's edition of the Outlaws of the Marsh. This is her translation. It's called All Men Are Brothers. Now, the Outlaws of the Marsh and All Men Are Brothers has, a, has another title. It's called The Water Margin. Basically, because uh, the it's called The Water Margin because the place where these heroes, these 108 heroes, hid was along marshlands. And this is their fortress. They were basically uh, outlaws, but they were kind of righteous outlaws, or what the sometimes is translated as knight errants, because they don't like the idea of uh, righteous uh, out the, the idea of outlaws. But anyway, as you can see from this um, pose, it was clearly a, a early progenitor of what would be a martial arts novel. All right, so that's the Nine Dragon Shichin Turns Robber. All tattooed. And I'll show you uh, there's pictures. This is profusely illustrated this translation. There's uh, Li Chung is branded and sent into exile. Basically, the first chapters deal with the heroes and how are they are um, kind of branded as outlaws by the government and they're forced uh, to go to this fortress, which becomes a kind of haven for them. And they end up... Um, fighting against both the corruption of the Sung dynasty government and corrupt officials. And um, this is Young Chi goes to the capital. You can tell. Definitely uh, martial arts. Red-headed devil sleeps in a drunken temple. Uh, drunken in the temple, I should say. And there's Wu Young exhorts his brothers. He was one of the leaders of the, of the outlaw band. And the other one, I believe, this is Wu Sung, Kills the Great Tiger of Qingyang Ridge. And what else do we have here? All of this is profusely illustrated this is Wu Sun meets uh, Chang Ching. And the, this, this book, 70 chapters long, unlike the 100 chapters version, at the end of the 70 chapters, uh, the first 70 chapters of Outlaws of the Marsh or All Men Are Brothers, we have, um, they basically get uh, pardoned by the Sung dynasty government, by the Sung emperor. In the next 30 chapters, what, it, what ends up happening is the Sung uh, officials um, deal harshly with and betray the, uh, the outlaw heroes. And uh, they, most of them come to a tragic end. There's Wu Sung, one of the lead uh, heroes in the, in the novel, escaping. Another hero, Hua Yun, shoots a wild goose. This is beautifully translated. This is Li Kui. And this is one of the uh, lead protagonists. The ten-foot green snake captures Wang the dwarf. You can see here, and there's the ten-foot green snake and Wong. 
She's a, a swordswoman. All right, so that's that one. And there's more. Sung Jang, he is one of the leaders of the outlaw band. And he's actually a historical figure that uh, figures prominently in, in, ancient, uh, in ancient records. Uh, ancient historical records in China. And this is Quan Chung, Seeks Away. The artist for this is a Westerner, Sung Chung, Sung Chung uh, sets f uh, free the warrior of the two spears. All right, so that's the warrior of the two spears. And let's see. Chapter 70 is what I like to see. Yeah, so the Hall of Righteousness and Loyalty receives words from heaven upon the tablet of stone. The heroes of the robber's lair are fearful because of an evil dream. So basically, the, this uh, uh, book, and this is a, I would say, a good copy. I bought it uh, used and it was fairly inexpensive. This version of the book, there's various versions of this. The artist is Miguel Covarubas. Covarubas. Let's see, yeah, Miguel Covarubias. Covarubias. All right, so that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And I also wanted to show this classic. This is Sir Thomas Mowry's Le, Le Mort d'Arthur, or The Death of King Arthur. And basically the reason why I wanted to show this is because I would compare this uh, type of work, with, which was written back in the 1500s, with this type of work. Because it, it reads like a book that was compiled on, based on stories told and told and retold over decades, over many years, and then finally redacted into one novel. So that's uh, Mallory's uh, The Death of King Arthur. The book All Men Are Brothers, and especially, and particularly, uh, Journey to the West, is certainly under that category. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the Chinese classics, and there's so much more that could be said um, and uh, about them. Uh, but if remember to, uh, if you liked what you saw, remember to give me that thumbs up, and um, thanks everyone for who's uh, subscribed, and uh, feel free to comment. And uh, these books are the easiest to find in terms of English translations. There is one other classic, which I, it's called, the, uh, it was published by Penguin Clacks, Classics, I believe. And it was called The Story of the Stone, and um, which doesn't uh, pique my interest, largely because it's a romance novel. All right, I prefer the... the uh, the early progenitors of what became the uh, mar martial arts novel. That's what, that's what piqued my interest about this. Anyway, so thanks everyone for watching. And as always, feel, feel free to comment. And I'll put a link to the, um, with the other videos I did on uh, uh, Chinese uh, wuxia or martial arts novel. So thanks everyone for, for your uh, comments, subscriptions, and... Uh, I'll put the subscription button right there. So, uh, thanks. Bye.